I'm sitting here with Kevin Iwamoto of Gold Spring Consulting. We're at the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs um, for the Independent Planner Education Conference. And I'm just going to ask Kevin to share some thoughts on um, what's happening in with uh, respect to the new administration's um, policies and actions um, with regard to meetings and events. Kevin, what, what do you anticipate? What are you seeing? And what are your concerns in that? Topic. So first off, I, I see some some real concerns with the ability to immigrate seamlessly, uh, but that's also spilling over into the whole travel sector. You know, in terms of like folks who are working here with a visa or without, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So you know, the the the, the, the current legislation that um, Mr. Trump is trying to put through has been rejected by the courts. So clearly what that means is a stage, a stage, stage of confusion for a lot of parties who are trying to manage uh, business as usual with regards to corporate travel, meetings and events, uh, employee travel back and forth, especially if the countries that they're supposed to go to are impacted by the travel right. ban. Right. And what do you see people doing who have international meetings planned? I mean, I see it as a problem in both directions. It is. With, okay. Yeah, definitely in both directions. So, so now you have to kind of really um, do some really strategic planning right. in, 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 because of the uncertainty of mm -hmm. the situation. If it goes through, then you have to do plan B. If it doesn't go through, then you can stick with plan A. Mm -hmm. But I see people doing like double work because they have to because the whole situation is, is not set in stone yet and it's continuing to evolve. Right. So as you know, in meeting planning, the more advanced planning you have, the better the situation and in today's environment, it's it's really challenging. So what is what does Plan B look like? I mean, can you give me some examples of yeah. what what planners are doing? I, I think the safest for Plan B is to kind of at least temporarily stay away from areas that might be impacted by any kind of travel restriction or travel ban. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's clearly the number one thing you can do, right? It's right. like hurricane season. Why would you hold a meeting, you know, in hurricane season in right. certain areas, right? You kind of plan around it. Right. So the same thing, I think, would apply for the any countries affected by the travel ban. You kind of want to plan around it. Right. Or postpone it to a future date where hopefully things have calmed down or right. been more rationalized. Right. Um, what else do you see as an area of concern with respect to the um, new administration? So I think what's very troublesome is you have um, this back and forth with the federal government um, sponsorship and funding as well as the state and local governments. Mm -hmm. And right now what you're seeing is like kind of like a blurring of the lines where the Fed, federal mm -hmm. government is saying we're not going to do that anymore so we're going to throw it on the state. Right. right? And um, the states that have come become accustomed to getting um, project money or um, federal funding. Um, that's all very up in the air right now, depending on what the administration mm -hmm. wants to do with the budget right. and how much support they want to give to like local state, state right. initiatives and um, state-funded projects. So you're seeing this collision, if you will, of, okay, so if you're not going to give me money, Mr. Federal Government, to fund local state projects, yes. right? Um, where am I going to get that money from, right? Do I have mm -hmm. to cancel or discontinue the program or do I need to get alternate sources of, of funding for it, right? right? And that also goes for, like, transportation projects, right? Like in California, we're looking at the rail and Caltrain, and that doesn't look like it's going to get funded. So who's going to fund the next generation um, replacement for Caltrain, right? So it's kind of starting a lot of this uncertainty between what the state is should expect and shouldn't expect. And right. I think to bring it home in like meeting and planning right. um, our industry, you look at the state of Florida that has dramatically cut funding for their CVB. Right. Right? Florida CVB, as you know, has been a very heavy sponsor for a lot of association uh, events and a lot of, um, they, they promote, you know, with a lot of budgetary dollars promoting the state of Florida. So right. if their budgets have been slashed dramatically, is the state going to make up that shortfall or, or or is the state basically saying we don't have the money so you're going to have to cut back right, right? so that that's going to be terrible news for you know the florida cvb but it's also going to be terrible news for the associations who generally expect and even some of the media publications right. who expect a certain amount of sponsorship dollars coming from florida cvb well they're not going to have that money now to kind of 
Right. Um, sponsor everything that they normally traditionally have sponsored. Right. So they're now going to have to really pick and choose strategically what media, what association conferences do we sponsor because we can't sponsor everything like we did before. Mm -hmm. right. I, I thought the administration was gung ho on transportation infrastructure. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's going to play out, or if that was campaign talk. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think. I mean, I think Elaine Chao is definitely a very experienced Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. She's she's done this before, and she's always been pretty savvy about the different areas that she governed. And transportation, I know, is something that she's not a stranger to. Okay. Um, I just don't know when you look at like the State Department got budget got slashed. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much her department is right. going to get slashed, do you right. know what I mean? Yeah. So I think a lot depends on what final operating budget is she going to end up with um, that she'll be able to support transportation on a state basis or on a federal basis. Mm -hmm. right. And do you see any particular, in terms of meetings, areas of concern uh, if, the new, if the proposed budget goes through? Like what meetings are going to be, what, you know, uh, industry sectors? Or meetings are going to be heard? Um, well, I, I think just given the some of the latest developments in um, federal and state government unfriendliness towards like not just minority groups but like groups like the LGBT mm -hmm. community and um, even some of the other ethnic communities, I think you're, you're going to see some pushback as to the level of support that planners or companies want to support certain states, certain oh, cities right. yes, I gotcha. <laughs> that are unfriendly in terms mm -hmm. of legislation and regulatory, mm -hmm. you know, right. uh, developments. So, you know, our, our industry spends billions and billions of dollars. We, we generally are a big part of GDP mm -hmm. and we generally drive the, the state and city federal incomes in terms of tax generation and transportation support and local business support and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, it, it, you know, I hate to say this, but the, the changes in legislation, especially discriminatory legislation, is definitely going to impact um, the volume of meetings and attendees in certain cities, certain states. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, planners... And corporate leaders are human beings. Right. And when they see something that just doesn't fit their personal um, ideals, um, they're, they're going to react. Yeah. Right? They're not going to support it. Right, I know. Thank you so much for your insights, Kevin. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah.